Thank you, Katie. Uh, make sure everybody can hear me. So today we're going to be discussing, as Katie said, the business intelligence dashboards. Um, I wanted to give uh, take this as more of an overview of the variety of dashboards that we have available and to give you ideas about how they might uh, benefit your firm um, used in complement uh, complementary with the reporting features in Jura Suite. So, all right. So, we'll talk about some of the benefits of the Jura Suite dashboards. Um, they are a very good tool uh, to give your leadership at the firm and also staff um, ability to view very important information at a quick glance. Um, you can see, you know, high high-level key firm metrics and such as new clients and matters, <clears throat> markups and markdowns, billing realization, collection realization, aged accounts receivable, uh, accounts payable, aged work in process, bank balances, uh, net income as it relates to revenue and expenses, and timekeeper for performance versus targets if you have a timekeeper budget set up. So I'm, think, I'm sure some people are asking, well, we already run reports, so why do we, would, would we need dashboards? Would we use them in place of reports or would we use them in addition to? And the answer is they are used together. Um, it is kind of that 30,000 foot view of a variety of metrics. Um, in many cases, honestly, a single dashboard may contain um, different pieces of information that it would otherwise take you running anywhere between three, four, five, six reports to get all in one place. So um, for managing partners, shareholders, uh, folks whose time is limited and valuable, it's a nice, easy way for them to be able to see some of those key pieces of information quickly and easily. And then if they need to uh, get a report to go further, that's definitely available, sometimes even within the dashboard itself. Um, you know, ultimately, if you need detail, the reports will still be the firm's primary resource for gathering that, that minutia, that detailed data about a particular metric like aged accounts receivable or new clients, things like that. Um, in the dashboard examples that we're going to be looking at, uh, you'll see that many of them have links to companion reports right on the dashboard itself, making it very easy for someone to link out to a report to get some additional detail without having to go run a separate report under the reporting module in Jura Suite. So I'm going to take you through um, some samples of the various dashboards that we have. And these are available either as a what I'll call a stock dashboard. Um, they're already there if you have the business intelligence module in Jura Suite. Um, in addition, uh, many of them um, come from our LexisNexis Marketplace site and can be downloaded. And then they would be available for you in your business intelligence module uh, once they are downloaded and set up. Uh, in addition, we can, just like we can customize reports currently, we can create custom dashboards. And, uh, you know, that is done in the same manner by engaging our custom reporting team uh, who would, you know, work with you to scope out your request and uh, deliver, you know, exactly what you're looking for. So one note before we move on to the slides of the actual dashboards, um, the information on these is derived from sample data. so. I would just ask that if you can focus more on like the type of information that's actually being provided by each dashboard and not so much on the actual values or the dates of the of the reports or the dates of the dashboards and things like that. So because if they're being used in your current system then they obviously the data would be current and it would be your data and all of that. So let's move to the first dashboard. 
since uh, the title of this presentation is how to use the dashboards to help grow your business, obviously new business for a firm is key in that growth. Um, and this is one of my favorite dashboards, so I did choose to start with this one. Um, you can see up at the top, you've got links to reports, just as I mentioned before, where you could get a full list of your new clients for a particular month or for the year, or a new um, a list of the new matters for the particular month or for the year. But what I really like is the graphical representation um, below that where it shows your new clients in the current year or the report year, which is the red line, and then the prior year, which is the blue line. So if the interest is to grow your business and the blue line is higher than the red line most of the time, that would suggest that at least by measure of new business or new clients and matters, that you're not growing in that respect. So being able to quickly see, you know, in this example, it looks like in new clients for most of the year did a pretty good job of beating the prior year. And then towards the end of the year, it kind of failed off a little bit, but really easy to quickly see, you know, the number that you're bringing in and your performance versus the prior year. And if we look down at the new matters graph, you can see that did a really good job actually on the new matters, except for it looks like October, but um, did a pretty good job of beating that prior year. So for somebody that doesn't have time to sit there and run a report of new matters from last year and one from this year and sit there and compare them, this is a quick snapshot that gives uh, the firm leadership the ability to see how the firm's doing at bringing in new business. And then if we look over to the right, we've got uh, some pie, pie charts. The first one is the top 10 originating attorneys that brought in new matters. And in this example, you can see pretty quickly that basically there's three originating attorneys that account for more than three quarters of the new matters. So that Give, might give um, firm leadership pause to say, well, that's great for those three, but what are the other four attorneys doing? You know, why are they not bringing as much business? Um, are, is there something we can do to help that? Do they need, you know, higher goals? Do they need more support from the, uh, from the firm leadership, et cetera? Just, it's, a, it's the beginning of a conversation to see, you know, why you have three attorneys making up more than three quarters of the new business. You'd like to uh, hopefully see a more even distribution, I would think, in a typical in a typical firm. And if, then, if we look down uh, the second pie chart, which is the uh, top ten practice classes for new matters, you can see, and I know the abbreviations are. Uh, may not mean anything to you, but I can help you with that. The, the three, about three quarters, a little less than three quarters, is being made up of bankruptcy, uh, intellectual property, and business incorporation. And then our remaining, I'll say 30% or so, is made up of the rest of our practice classes. So, again, are there opportunities by just simply looking at this graph for us? Uh, us as a firm to go out and uh, try to attract new business in other practice classes where we may not have, where we may not be bringing in as much new business. And, you know, is it due to the uh, economic uh, environment? Is it due to the location that you're in, et cetera? I mean, there are a lot of factors, but at least it's, again, it's the start of a conversation. Um, at the firm to determine why you have kind of a, a lopsided uh, distribution. And maybe your firm focuses on bankruptcy, and so it makes sense that it's that big, as um, big of a piece, but you, you never know. So this is a good one. Um, as I'm not going to show all the drill-down reports on every dashboard or anything, but I, I do have the, 
two of the reports from this dashboard that I can show you, which is going to be here. And that would I would access that by clicking on the, the links at the top of that dashboard on the prior uh, screen. So this then gives me the list of my new clients for the year and a list of my new matters for the year with billing timekeeper, practice class, office, different other information. So that's a that's a good dashboard to have, especially if the firm's goal is to try to bring in uh, new business. The second dashboard here is what's called the firm operating statistics. And you can see at the top we have our months to date and year to date sections and it breaks down everything from the billable hours which you can see is a blue hyperlink which would that would actually be a, a link out to a report uh, gives you your bill, billing realization the uh, amount of fees billed the hourly amount of fees billed hourly um, gives you your total uh, markups and markdowns for that month in addition to the amounts received and if there were any AR write-offs which would happen after the bill is posted. So again, if I'm a managing partner of a firm and I can come out here and in pretty quick order determine, so for this month we marked down 9, 000, almost $9,000 worth of fees. Does that sound about right to me? Do I feel like we're letting, you know, Letting money, leaving money at the door, um, is that our typical billing amount or billing hours for a typical month? Is that low? Is that high? Um, and then I've got my year-to-date numbers on the other side, which is pretty much all the same uh, value or same metrics anyway. Uh, but a nice, uh, quick way to be able to see that information without having to run, uh, like I said, a billing analysis. A, a collection analysis, uh, a markup, markdown report, etc., and have to run three reports um, with multiple pages, and instead of being able to come into one place and get that information. In addition, below the the first two sections of this dashboard, we've got our accounts receivable summary, which gives us a nice aging breakdown with the totals for each aging period and our total AR which you can see is also a hyperlink and that can be you know you could click on that to link out to a more detailed uh, report of that aged accounts receivable. On the other side we have a work in process showing you know what what we still have is basically unbilled uh, fees and therefore it lets us know that we've got a lot of fees that are over 121 days old that we have not billed yet and if we haven't billed it then we can't collect on it so again it you know it's looking at where are we leaving money at the door because we're not getting our bills out on time or we're not getting time billed in an efficient manner um, and then kind of back to the accounts receivable, you know, we have almost uh, over one and a half million dollars in aged accounts receivable that's over 121 days. So do, do we as a firm need to strengthen our efforts uh, in the collection department? Um, do we need to try to reach out to clients and, and arrange payment or plans, payment different alternative payment arrangements to at least get some of that money coming back in. Oops. And so these are, again, conversation starters um, that can be used. And if somebody has access to this, they can run this dashboard at any time and get a real-time number of what it is at any point, point in time. So, And then down below, we've got basically a uh, graphical representation of either the accounts receivable 
for the work in process, which, and part of that's just some people are more visual and they prefer more of a graphical view. Others might like the kind of the list view uh, up above. But just alternatives, and as you can see, uh, work in process, that is, a, that is one report. Aged AR, that's another report. And then as we already mentioned, billing analysis, collection analysis, markup and markdown. So at least five reports, at least the, the total, kind of the, the key uh, high-level information from five reports all on a single page. So for somebody whose time is valuable, that's the nice thing about a dashboard like this is they can see a lot of information in pretty quick order without sorting through pages of reports. All right, the next uh, dashboard is the financial summary. This one is pretty straightforward. It's basically the firm's revenue and expenses for the current month with the net income or loss. Uh, if there are budgets set up, then it would track the actual against the budget and show you a variance. And then as well, we have our year-to-date with uh, actual versus budget and the variance. And then a breakdown below, month by month, of each of revenue versus expenses. Again, providing the graphical representation and also, you know, just a text or list view for those who prefer either one. But again, pretty quick and easy to come out here and keep an eye on expenses for the firm. Take a quick look and see, you know, what's revenue look like right now. Um, now, this doesn't have a year over year on it, um, but that's something, as I said, we can customize dashboards. So this, we could take this dashboard and, and incorporate a year over year comparison and give you that kind of a, a variance as well. So again, this one is would be helpful, um, not probably not for the attorneys and back office staff so much, but definitely firm leadership to keep an eye on things. All right. Now, the first few dashboards up until this one that I've shown you are basically available on our marketplace, uh, LexisNexis marketplace site, and can be downloaded. This is the one, this is the one dashboard, and it's actually three dashboards, but this is the one that is included as part of uh, the business intelligence module, as it is when you uh, have that in your Jira suite if you haven't downloaded anything at all. So this is showing us, you know, our average days to bill. How long is it taking us from, on average, from the the date that a time time is entered or expenses are entered until we actually get those items on a posted bill and out the door. Um, 52 seems maybe a little high, but again, it depends. That would be firm to firm. Um, most firms would have a good handle on what that normal average is, and they could quickly see here we're running below average, above average, et cetera. And again, conversation starter with uh, the attorneys, the billing department, and setting maybe setting more strict deadlines about when time is submitted and deadlines for when bills have to be out, things like that. Uh, the next item is the, with the little green uh, gauge here, is days to pay. So that would be accounts payable. So that's saying, on average, the firm is paying its bills, um, uh, you know, uh, 63 days after, based on from the date of the invoice. So that's probably a little high, maybe. But um, again, this is sample data. So as I said, don't take so much stock in the numbers in in that, other than the what the information is showing you. So that might be a discussion with the payable uh, department to say, you know, why aren't we getting, why aren't we paying these checks faster? 
Is it because we have a cash flow issue? Um, you know, all sorts of reasons, but definitely a nice thing for a partner who's not necessarily involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, accounts payable operations and tracking vendors and looking at check dates and invoice dates and all that to get a quick snapshot of, you know, is the firm paying its bills on time? Then we've got the cash flow cycle for firm, which would uh, let us know basically, you know, from when bills go out, you know, when are we getting when are we getting paid? We've got some links to different reports, you know, average billing cycle by billing timekeeper, by practice class, by client. Um, so you know, a, a dive into one of these reports might reveal that there's a few particular clients that have a higher than average billing cycle, and that's kind of raising the overall firm average. And maybe there's something that can be done specifically with those particular clients, or maybe it's one particular billing timekeeper that's lower than the other, others, et cetera. We've got our uh, aged collections for the firm. And then also the another kind of different view of the aged accounts receivable. So this is still part of that. I don't have one of the rolling realization at this point, but this is still part of the the prior uh, dashboard. It's just that third tab uh, that says firm summary. So uh, you you will see some repetition from dashboard to dashboard um, on certain things, but uh, this definitely has some things that the others did not. Uh, while this does show fees worked and what the prior year was and if it, what the change was, it shows our fees billed. And based on the variance, it's going to put an icon here, and in this case, it's a pretty big variance, so it's got a little red negative sign uh, next to the stack of coins. Same with the fees billed, uh, rather drastic uh, change there. And, but then our fees variance, um, we actually had negative in the prior year, and so the increase year over year was, was good, so we've got the little green plus sign. And then in uh, fees collected, we're showing, the again, a, a drop-off. So another little negative sign there. But a nice uh, kind of a summary of what's going on with the firm as far as how you are year over year with your fees worked, billed, collected, et cetera. Over here we've got our bank account balances which might be nice for somebody to be able to quickly see what those are uh, without having to go out and, you know, open up each bank and look at the checkbook or log into their actual bank to see. Obviously, those two should always match, but et cetera. It's just a nice, quick, easy way to see how much the firm has in their trust operating, and if you had other bank accounts, they would also display here as well. We've got a little cash flow chart here, and obviously because of the sample data, this is, we have hugely negative cash flow, but um, a, ni a nice easy way to see that as well. And then we have our total uh, accounts payable, which is telling us that due payables due by the end of the month is X amount, and that's on the same screen with the cash flow and the bank balances, so that should let somebody know pretty quickly, do we have enough to cover the bills that are due by the end of the month. All right, I'm going to move to the next slide. All right, we've got a client profitability analysis. Where this can, um, this gives, this is an overall view of all the clients with different metrics and in performance indicators, which you see over on the right-hand side indicated by the uh, yellow, green, and red icons there. Um, 
we've got the standard realization, the build realization, collection realization, you know, overall days to collect, partner leverage, etc. And over on the right, you've got kind of an average of what are the standard fees billed, and then any markup or markdowns to a negotiated rate, uh, negotiated fees billed, and then it gives um, just a standard markups and markdowns, et cetera. But quickly, you know, somebody could see how much are we marking up or marking down? Are we giving too much away? Um, are there changes we need to make? Again, without having to run a whole bunch of different reports to get that information. So it's, it's all about the ability to see things quickly and easily and then take a deeper dive into reports if needed. And actually on this one you can see that there are five reports available down in the bottom right, which are the profitability by client, the profitability by billing timekeeper, by practice class, by billing agreement, and then a timekeeper leverage report. So any of those, you would simply click the link and the report would open up, and it's that easy. All right, so a lot of the stuff that I've, we've looked at so far um, has been more geared towards probably things that uh, firm leadership would want to see. Um, this is, um, these are timekeeper. Uh, the next few are geared towards originating billing and working timekeepers to where an individual originating timekeeper could keep tabs on sort of, you know, the performance of their files, their clients matters, and how they're doing. And, and once, if a timekeeper has access to that information, then the firm can empower that timekeeper to, you know, hold them to, you know, certain goals or uh, budgeted amounts and things like that. So this is, it gives you the name of the timekeeper up at the top right, you see the date at the top, and then we have our um, month to date, prior year variance, year to date, prior year variance, with a percentage, we've got the number of new clients that were opened for this originating timekeeper. Uh, we've got the new matters opened for month to date. And again, it gives that prior year so you know, you know, am I still doing a good job of bringing in new business? It didn't, it, then it actually would uh, list the new clients and new matters opened for that particular month so they can see the names as well. Just a quick snapshot for the originating timekeeper to kind of keep tabs on their own material and things that they are responsible for. All right, and next one is a billing timekeeper receivable summary. Um, not as much like the originating timekeeper. Um, it gives more, since this is for somebody in, in charge of billing certain files, it's going to focus more on, of course, the work in process, the AR balance. Uh, it does show, you know, what total prepaid balances are there for their clients and matters. Uh, total investment, which would be, you know, the amount of uh, time that's been worked by the firm and by attorneys you know, working on that particular billing timekeeper's files, the trust balances, and then it gives the aging breakdown for the aged AR and aged work in process, along with the uh, pie charts that we saw on one of the previous dashboards. And up right below the person's name there up at the top left, uh, you can see that there are, it looks like six reports here that correspond to the metrics on the dashboard that can be linked out to for additional detail. And again, right from here 
all in one spot. You know, we don't you don't have to leave and go into reports and um, go through the 900 plus reports that we have in your suite to uh, to find the one you need, unless maybe you've made them a favorite. But so it's all about making things easier and more efficient for the timekeepers, shareholders, leadership, etc. I'm going to jump to the next slide. All right, and this one, uh, this is for the working timekeeper analysis. Um, this is a, that's a report that I think most every Juris firm sends out to their timekeepers, you know, at the end of every month, and so they know where they stand. Um, this would be giving them access to this dashboard would be a way for them to be able to go in at any time and look at their uh, you know current numbers you know what have they worked what's the amount if you have timekeeper budget set up uh, in in Juris then it would show the budgeted amount and any kind of a variance shows the year-to-date values and and then gives them the you know a percent of goal so they know if based on the goal that's been set for them by the firm are they feeding that goal are they not and so when it comes to firm growth if you um, have a lot of people not beating the goal or not even meeting the goal then it seems it, it would seem that either the targets need to be raised, or that uh, you know if more of your timekeepers were going above and beyond maybe a low target, that would suggest that at least there's possibility for growth at the firm because they're they're working beyond what was what was set for them, which would mean there's more business coming in and there's more work required and needed. Uh, it does show the, down here at the bottom, we've got, again, um, it, months to date and year to date, and then it has, you know, the build amounts, or the build hours and the amount, the markups or markdowns, write-offs, uh, you know, collections for that particular working timekeeper. And then you have your year-to-date numbers on the right-hand side as well. Um, that's a good way for the individual timekeepers to keep an eye on their markups or markdowns, assuming they have control over that, and that's not done by uh, the billing timekeeper. But you know, maybe they're marking too much down, which is why their uh, billable hours is not um, meeting target. So. Again, quick way for somebody to see kind of where they stand at any given time um, without having to wait for that report to be delivered to them at, at month end or go ask for that report to be run. They could simply come in here and take a quick look and see. And then you can empower the timekeepers to kind of own their performance because now they have the tools to monitor their own their own metrics at any given time. All right, and this is more on the um, kind of on the timekeeper hourly targets as well. You've got your list of timekeepers and you know with their month to date hours and their goal and then their percentage of goal. And uh, you can see that it's broken down as uh, those over 80% of goal and those under 80%. And then uh, what I did was I clicked on one of the names and brought up the report here, which you see kind of at the bottom half of the screen. Um, so this is not the, what you see on the bottom is actually a, a report that I linked to, not part of the dashboard. Um, but that is showing for the first timekeeper there. Uh, and Allen, where there was missing time or what where there were days where she was below her daily goal, which accounts for uh, some of the variance that 
where she did not meet a full eight-hour day. All right, so kind of get into, kind of wrap this around the theme, which is, you know, how can these dashboards help drive the growth of your firm? Um, as I said, they give the firm's leadership and staff the ability to quickly and easily identify factors in real time that may be inhibiting your firm's growth. So these are a few of the examples I pulled out, and some of them I've touched on, but um, a large amount of accounts receivable over a certain age, like 120 days or even 90 days, uh, may indicate a need for more aggressive collections efforts or willingness to, to work out payment plans with clients and try to get uh, some money coming in the door that's, that you've already earned and you're just waiting to collect. Uh, reduction in the number of new clients and or matters over a previous year may point to a need for more aggressive marketing by the firm to ensure a steadier stream of new business. And as we saw in that very first uh, slide, three of our timekeepers were doing a pretty good job uh, of our originators bringing in new business, but the other four were, you know, definitely not doing their fair share. So that may be a more targeted, depending on the cause of that, but it may be a more targeted effort to get certain folks to be more aggressive in their uh, outreach for new business for the firm. Um, a lower than expected realiz billing realization tied in with a uh, total amount of time marked down during pre-bill or during billing might indicate a need by the firm to revisit their policies uh, and procedures to kind of rein in the amount of markdowns. Maybe every attorney has the ability to mark down whatever they want and if everybody does that, that adds up pretty quickly and so maybe there need to be more stringent rules about that type of thing put in place to uh, stop leaving quite as much money at the door. And a few other points here. Um, they, the dashboards allow the firm to empower their timekeepers to take ownership of meeting their daily, monthly, yearly targets by providing them with easy access to their performance metrics in real time. So they aren't dependent on somebody running the report. They can see their information anytime they want. Um, the ability to stay on top of your firm's revenue and expenses, as we saw with the dashboard that showed us our total income, total uh, expenses, and net income. And uh, lastly, determine which of your firm's clients are most profitable through that client profitability, which ones are least profitable, and then maybe look at why are why are the certain clients you know least profitable and other things we can do to correct that. Maybe when we're not charging them enough. Um, maybe we've got partners doing all the work for these clients when maybe some of it could be handled by associates and paralegals, which are lower cost resources and would help increase the profit margin on those particular clients. All right, well, I'm a, little, I'm a few minutes before my uh, 45, but that is the end of my slideshow. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for attending this afternoon. And I wasn't going to be able to, in, in just a short amount of time, be able to go in and, and really get into the usage of the dashboards in as far as in the product so much, but what I wanted to do was show you the variety of types of dashboards that are available um, either through Marketplace or in Jura Suite. And then uh, obviously you can customize dashboards as well, but show you what's out there. And so you could start thinking about, you know, do you think these would be valuable? for your firm uh, to have, for the managing partners, shareholders to have, um, and how being able to quickly see some of these different metrics might help your firm grow and 
manage some of those parts of your business. So I thank everybody for their time, and um, at this time I will uh, open it up to questions. All right, wonderful. Um, first off, thank you, Nick, for a very informative session. This does conclude the presentation portion of our webinar. As a reminder, if you do have any questions for Nick, please feel free to ask them via the questions pane located on your webinar control panel. So our first question, and one that we've gotten um, a lot of, is can you show us how to get to the dashboard um, or, you know, is there a link to the location of the free dashboard? Oh, through the marketplace, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, let me do that. I apologize, I'm trying to get off of that page. No worries. Take some time, right? <laughs> and something is wrong with uh, my ID. I apologize for that. So you're going to see me logging in as somebody else. <laughs> So the URL is marketplace.lexisnexus.com. And once you're here, there is a catalog tab. And you can see that it's broken out. Um, there are even some reports and some other things out here that are available for Jura Suite as well. But you'll see over here on the far right, we have a dashboard link. And if I click on that, it will take me to the list of the various dashboards that are available. And just to clarify now, are those available to everyone? Um, they um, they are not necessarily available for everyone. If you do not have access to those, we would want to reach out to your account representative uh, to see why you don't currently have access to them. They, if, if you have business intelligence in your Jura Suite setup, uh, then I believe you should have access to them. And if not, then we may need to um, determine if that's just something that needs to be turned on or what. If, you, if you're seeing a download link, if, it, if this is grayed out, that's, that's basically telling you that for whatever reason your marketplace ID isn't giving you access to that and that may be, again, that's something we'll, we would just need to follow up with your uh, account manager to get corrected. And these each, you can see each one has import instructions. Um, it is very important that when you import these that you do it in the proper way. So I would recommend uh, following those instructions uh, because it, it is very important that you import them in the correct, uh, the correct way. And if you needed assistance with that, um, the either uh, Jura support or if you're a tiered service plan customer, uh, you could email uh, tiered service plan inbox and we could assist you with downloading and importing those for you. All right, wonderful. Um, can you explain the difference between standard rate, worked rate, and build rate? Uh, sure. So the standard rate is based off of your standard fee schedule. Uh, for many firms, that has the code of STDR, but it doesn't have to be STDR. That is the default when you set up Juris, but that default can be uh, changed under firm options. 
So what under firm options, whatever is defined as your standard fee schedule, that is the quote standard rate. The build rate would be effect your effective build rate would be the rate at which the entry you know was billed. So if through markdowns or markoffs you affect or reduce that rate, your build rate might be lower than your worked rate, and the worked rate is the rate that was uh, put on the time entry at the time that the that the time was entered, but prior to billing. All right, wonderful. So I, I hope that clarifies that, but um, usually the standard rate is the one that um, most folks get confused about because it sounds like it should be something else, but it's really all just based off your standard fee schedule. Okay, great. Good to know. Our next question is, how does the new client slash matter dashboard handle split matters? As far as, um, when, um, well, let's see. A new matter is a new matter. Um, now, are we referring to split as it relates to the originating timekeeper? I guess that I would need a little clarification on that. Okay, um, we can take that question uh, offline and yeah, let's um, do that. connect one-on-one -on -one to make sure we're answering the right thing. Exactly. I don't want to, I mean, as far as account, a new matter is a new matter. If it's split, um, you know, split happens at billing, but um, if we're talking about the uh, originating timekeeper distribution and if it's a 50-50 with two originating timekeepers, uh, that I would need to look into. So. All right. Well, then our next question is on the working timekeeper analysis, does that include all time posted and unposted? Uh, this would in, this would not be uh, it would not include uh, unposted time I don't believe I will I will double check that to be sure so if you can send me that one for uh, an offline follow up too just so I can uh, test and verify that I do believe that that is pulling from uh, the build time or sorry the unbuild time and build time tables. And those uh, tables require that the time be posted. But I will get clarification on that for sure. OK, great. Our next question is, on the firm operating statistics, can you run that for a certain period? Back to that dashboard. Uh, yes. You absolutely can. Um, it would be based, you can see this has a very old date to it. Um, it would be based off of your, initially off of your current period, but it does have uh, properties that you can go to to run it uh, for a different uh, time period. All right, great. Um, and it looks like we only have one question left. So our last question is, rather than give a partner access to these dashboards, is there a way that you can run them and send them to the partners? Uh, that, unfortunately, they are meant to be just that, a dashboard. So it's not like a report or even uh, a distribution or something that you can set up um, to send out to people, I mean, they would need they would need to have access to them. All right, good to know. Well, it looks like that's all the questions we have for today, um, and we will follow up as um, with any questions that uh, we noted. Okay. 
That officially concludes today's webinar, and I would like to thank you, Nick, once again for your expert advice on today's topic, and thank you to all of our attendees for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. I have a few quick follow-up reminders.